welcome to my channel to any new subscribers my name is Tanya and welcome back to all those of you who are already watching me thank you so much for watching my videos it really means a lot to me looking at the main page of my channel today I just saw that there are now 600 of you who have subscribed to my channel and I'm really really grateful for that and I can't believe it somehow because when I started this channel I hoped that there were like five people who showed reactions to my videos and maybe commented or subscribed to me. It's been really cool to um, hear from all of you and to read your comments, um, to ent interact with you, to see um, that you're interested in the same things as me and yeah, all of this means means really a lot to me and I don't think I say it often enough but thank you so much and I, I really appreciate your support. The other reason why I'm filming this video today is because I have some makes from February. Yes, you heard right, February. I somehow didn't find the time to film this video within the last month, so yeah. I have four things to show you. Some lovely summery tops and blouses and sweaters. The first thing I made is something I already told you about in my February fabric haul and I showed you this fabric and told you that I had already cut into it and I made a ruffle blouse out of the Bertelsmann magazine. The construction of this is quite simple. It has a straight cut bodice, it is sleeveless, but the interesting detail of this blouse is that it has ruffles which start at the back of the blouse, are then sandwiched between the bodice and its facing, go into the armholes and end somewhere in the side seam of the blouse. And although this is a pattern made by Berda, the instructions were really well to follow because this is one of their step-by-step -step patterns. But you get a whole side um, with pictures and illustrations so you see where you actually have to sew the ruffle onto the blouse and how you have to attach the facing and all the rest of the stuff. And even though I don't like the general Buddha instructions, I really like working with these step-by-step -step instructions now. The hardest part of making this blouse was to work with the crepe fabric, because um, at first to make sure everything is cut and the hems are even and that kind of stuff, and then to hem this flounce here, because um, the seam is curved and you have to fold it inwards two times to hem it properly um, because you can see um, the downside of the ruffles as well and that's obviously a little bit harder on um, round edges. I made a few changes to the pattern along the way. Um, for example, I included these flounces here because I found that without them um, the top looked quite odd on me because I have a pear-shaped body and I want to emphasize my shoulders so everything that is shorter than here makes me even more pear-shaped so I just sewed these under which creates a more broader shoulder line and yeah that made it look better on me. I think for future makes I'll just widen this upper flounce to not have an additional pattern piece but I think it looks nice anyway. The other big thing I changed was um, the back. I added three buttons instead of one because with one button just up here um, it was gaping open so yeah I added three buttons. However in the future I will completely leave out the buttons and make the back piece out of one piece because I found that I don't need buttons um, to get into it. I can just pop it over my head. So adding buttons is just more work for me and um, not functional at all. Also, I cropped the top at the shoulders to make everything sit a little higher and I adjusted the flounce therefore. And the last thing I changed was this thing here. Um, actually, by Berta's instructions, the slit is meant to stay open, but I closed it and I liked how it felt and so I kept it. I wasn't really able to wear this uh, within February because it was 
quite cold but in the last two weeks it got a lot warmer here so I actually got some wear out of this and I really really love to wear this. For one reason, because every time I walk by a mirror or reflecting glass and see myself in it I'm like yay I'm butterfly and I can move in it. It is not restricting in any way which is completely new for me um, for woven garments but on the other hand hugs my figure and not makes me look like a tent like it's the problem with other woven um, garments so yeah big thumbs up for this and i will definitely definitely make more of this even though it took quite a long time to make this um, it took me almost two weeks i think on to make number two I finally tried a very popular pattern here which I wanted to try for quite a long time and it's the Astoria sweater by Seamwork. I used a thick textured jersey or Ponte di Roma for this. That's what it looks from the inside. And as much as I love the pattern and love the style and love the fabric, I don't really like the sweater. Um, because every time I put it on I feel like super restricted and it's super tight and um, the, f the pattern actually says that the fabric you use has to have at least 40% stretch and I checked this fabric and in my opinion it has 40% stretch but somehow this is still too tight. I have three major problems with this sweater. The first one is that it sits really tight around the bust and I just can't really breathe. The second problem is that it sits really tight under the arms and that's an issue I noticed on some other seamwork patterns too, that um, they have a really small armhole and um, at least I like to have a bigger one. Probably I have unproportionately big arms, I don't know but um, I don't like it that tight and I think this sweater comes off really tight. And the other issue is something I read a lot about on the internet and it's the neckband and that it stands up here. I think it is simply too long and um, this can be fixed by shortening the neckband and then everything will be fine. I already incorporated all these changes into the pattern and I'm eager to make another one because I really like the style and <laughs> I just can't accept that um, it won't work for me. So I'm trying it at least one more time. On to project number three. Probably you remember this lovely fabric from my February fabric haul. I said there that I was planning to make a cold neck top out of it. I cut out this cold neck top, I stitched it together and it looked just quite wrong. Um, Probably it was because um, the pattern was not made for non-stretchy fabrics. However, I didn't want to leave the fabric unused for something I could really wear. So I thought of something smaller I could make out of the pieces I had already cut out and made something out of it I had already planned for some time, but actually with a different fabric. And that's how this peplum top was created. Some time ago I had the idea to create a top with ribbons that run over the shoulders and then down to the waist um, and could be tied there. And I imagined it to be a really cute top. However, I'm not sure if I like this at all. Probably this kind of cut is just um, not right for my figure because the peplum emphasizes my hips and um, on the other hand there is no emphasis to my shoulders which makes it really not a good top for a pear-shaped body. On the other hand, I should have planned this pattern probably a lot better and should have made a trial before I cut into my precious fabric. Probably there'll be some occasion for which this is just right, but I haven't worn it so far and yeah, that's a bit of a pity, but... So I'd be curious to hear what you think about it. Is it a nice top or more like an epic fail? <laughs> okay, so we had one great make and two fails. Um, the last thing I made is another great thing as well and um, I'm really happy it turned out well. It is another Cornex sweater. A drop one this time with 
three quarter sleeves because I have this fabric in my stash now for some time and I didn't really know how much I had of it but I had assumed that it was enough to make a top because I don't really buy fabric scraps that are smaller than um, like the amount of fabric you need to make a top out of it because that would be senseless. Um, so I opened the fabric, I laid it to the floor and I realized I have like this much, 56 centimeters. So I put the pieces on the fabric and I moved them around a lot to finally get them onto the fabric and I used a tiny tiny seam allowance and I had to crop it at the bottom um, to make a wearable garment out of it and I had to crop the sleeves as well. Um, actually I had planned to make um, a sweater just like the one I'm wearing now um, with full length sleeves and not cropped but However, I like how it turned out and I like that it's cropped because that means um, it isn't the exact same garment than I'm wearing now, which makes my wardrobe a little more varied. So yeah, I'm really happy about that and um, I couldn't really wear this in February or the beginning of March as well because it was still too cold and this is cropped and um, I don't have pants that are high-waisted so I can wear this with. But, however, I like to wear it now and um, yeah, it's the perfect cropped sweater. It's actually the perfect project to make because this is such a fast make. This is basically a basic t-shirt just with a curl neck which doesn't take extra time to make because you don't have to hem the front, you just have to hem the back and you just have to fold this part under and I'm getting the hang on making these curl necks top now. So I guess you'll see a lot more of them um, in the future. So those were all the things I made in February. I'll go ahead and film my March makes right after this video. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and comment if you have anything to say. So you'll hopefully see the next video of me on Easter. Um, till then, stay well. Bye!